All right, uh, I'm going to start here on these notes. It's slide 14, but I'm going to try my best to get through as many as I can. Hopefully, it'll all fit onto one video. Um, just so if we are behind in our pacing, you can always just refer to this, and hopefully, uh, my descriptions of each slide help you, and you can get it done. All right, here, it, as usual, you just need your notebook, right? And you need to write your notes, uh, definitions that are bound in pink boxes, right? So if you have some information in a pink box, it means copy it in. It's a useful vocabulary word. And then the task here is identify four elements that make up the body, the top four. So you study the percents here around the individual and the high, the four top or highest percents you're going to write down in a list that represents the four most common or the most abundant elements or types of atoms in the body. All right, next slide is a periodic table. Nothing to do here. It's just referencing uh, maybe eighth grade science or to jog our memory. Um, there's a YouTube video here. And as always, I would encourage you to study the YouTube video and be prepared to uh, watch it just because it gives you more background information. So if you feel like a concept doesn't make sense, as always, click on the YouTube link and it provides you with a little more information to help you learn it. Um, right here, the task was made quite simple. Um, and ask you to guess how many gold atoms do you think it takes to coat the surface of a dollar bill. However, the number, the answer is already written on the slide. I messed up a bit. So lucky you, you know exactly how many atoms it takes, and you can write that in scientific notation. Ten, or at one uh, times ten to the seventeenth power, or this longer number. Scientists don't like writing any more than they have to. They like being efficient with their time and saving time. So. They write it in more of a simple way here. And you can compare this scientific notation and this, and they are the same number, but you can see you have to write so much less in this form. The 17 indicates how many zeros after the decimal place. So the, if you put the decimal place 1 right here between the 1 and the 0 and the 5, and then you count the places after, you will count a total of 17 places here. This number is very large. Atoms are very small. There's a link here that discuss the, the discovery of the atom or atomic theory. It's useful information. You might find it uh, handy and helpful, especially if you if you like history. All right, the next one is atom. We come up with the definition of the atom. And then here is a YouTube video that connects you to ideas of the atom, helping you kind of understand the difference of different elements. So each of these elements are represented by atoms, and each atom that makes an element is different. So there's different types of atoms and they differ in certain things. They have different proton or electron numbers or, or neutrons, uh, depending on the element. And like hydrogen has one proton, helium has two, and on and on it goes. So one of the main ways that uh, different atoms are uh, differentiated is the number of protons they have. Uh, we don't need to get into that. This isn't a chemistry class, but you may re recall it from eighth grade. All right, this activity we're doing in class. Uh, if we need to, I'll make a video for this, so don't worry, just skip over this. This slide is background information about how carbon is uh, moving throughout an environment. It's just background information. We may or may not need it later, don't worry about it. Right here is a fossil fuel video. This YouTube video is of a Vice News clip. It's 20 minutes long. My goal is for you to watch at least 10 minutes of it. Identify what the problem is in the situation. So what is the problem or mystery or the issue involved in the video? Uh, create a list of observations that you think are important within that 10-minute viewing. Your hypothesis should be uh, what you think people should do given the situation. So given the problem or the, the issue, what should people do? And then you just write your hypothesis here. All right. This next clip is just a reminder for all of us that we have a virtual lab to do. We're doing this in class. You should not have to do this now. If you do have to do this outside of class, I'll make a video for it to help you. Actually, correct myself, the video already is available on the Google Classroom. So if you needed to work on this at home, the video will help you. It's already made and created on Google Classroom. Let's look at it. Gotta go up, sorry. Here it is right here. 
So the virtual lab right there. So, and there's a video showing you how to do it. Here's the document. So if you're working at home and you realize you're going through your notes and you realize you didn't get the lab done, just go back to Google Classroom and you'll find the video you need right there. All right, moving forward. We have another simulation. This is FET. We intend to do this in class, but if you don't get there, your goal is to observe the simulation. I'll just do that now. So let's open it up. And I go to, uh, let's see here. I think I'm going to micro. No, I think. Uh, Let's see if we can't change the the version it is. Okay, so the version we want is this far right side. I found it finally. Okay, so there's three options. Click on this one. We're choosing this one because it's just more clear. It's not as complicated. I don't want you to get uh, too confused by things. What I do want you to do is click on this because it shows you. Um, there's this thing called H3O, not H2O, that's H3O, plus it has a positive charge. Then you have this thing called OH minus. Um, and these are called ions. When you have a charged particle, you can refer to it as an ion. And these have this has a negative charge, and the H3O plus has positive charge. Let's see what molecular count looks. Okay, so right here we have uh, H2O. So this bottom blue uh, bar is the amount in scientific notation, that's a lot, 10 to the 25 is a lot of zeros, so a really big number of water molecules. Then you have this OH with a negative charge called hydroxide. It tells you how much there is. And then it tells you how much there is of this H3O plus molecule, whose name is, uh, I think it's hydronium, uh, with a positive charge. But it tells you, again, there's a lot of them. 10 to the 16 hydronium, 10 to the 16 hydroxide, and then 10 to the 25, a lot more of water. All right. The idea is to increase or decrease the pH and see what it means for these particles. So as you increase the pH, you make pH a higher number, you see that the pH is rising up. But it tells you how many hydroxide you have and how many hydronium ions you have, or the H3O+. And the question is, is, it go, is the amount going up or going down? So as you increase the pH, so that pH is going up from seven, what's, are you getting more or less of the hydroxide or the negative charged? So as we go up, you can see as the pH goes up, what's happening. So you would just describe that. And if you go down, are you getting more of a certain type of atom? So the pH is a range of uh, numbers that tells you how much of hydroxide or how much of the H3O plus or the hydronium ion is in the water. So you study the results. So you're, as you click through, you just study, as you do the pH and you go low, what are you getting more of? Which particle are you getting more of? As you go up, which particle are you getting more of? And you just report on those things. Let's go back to the slide. So it says, observe the simulation. What's in the water to make pH high? So which uh, charged um, compound or ion or molecule is in the water when the pH is high. And what's it dissolved in the water to make the low pH? So what kind of charged particle or charged molecule or ion when the pH is low? And then based on the article from the virtual lab, how does the pH harm organisms? So there is an article with this assignment. The worksheet is on Google Classroom. All right, so here we go. Here's the worksheet. Let's check it out real quick. Now, this worksheet you've likely already done. But if you haven't, the part that this slide was talking about is this article right here. So this article right here is the article from the virtual lab it's referring to. So on this slide, Right here, this question, based on the article um, from the virtual lab, how does pH harm organisms? So you just got through studying pH uh, right here. So you study pH and what it is. 
and then you have this article that you probably have already done, and, you, and if you haven't, you need to read through this. Whoops. And then answer this as best you can. So based on studying what pH means, based on, so basically to answer this question, how does pH harm organisms? Was it low pH or high pH that did the, did the harm? So, and you know that by doing the activity. So when you do this activity, you learn that either high pH or low pH is bad, or maybe both. But when you get done with the virtual lab, you know that pH does affect the population. So what you need to do is remind yourself what you learned here about what low pH or high pH is, and remind yourself of the article, and then come up with your response. Based on the article from the virtual lab, the pH did what to the organism? So what's happening to organisms to hurt them? We know that changing pH affects them, but how is that? So tie in the information from the simulation right here and the article to come up with an idea. I'd expect a, a two or three sentence response here for full credit. All right, moving forward. So here's where we begin uh, another section of chapter six where we learn about the structure of the atom. Again, this isn't a chemistry class, so we're going to be more brief as we go through it. We have the nucleus, which is a positively charged center. It says in your journal, draw what you see as the nucleus in this image. So draw what you see as the nucleus, which is in this area or here. All right, for electron, don't have to do anything, but there is a support uh, link here for a YouTube video that would help you better understand the idea of electron. It's negatively charged particles found in all atoms. The negatively charged particle is on the outer part of the atom. It is So you have the nucleus that is positively charged, and then you have these electrons, or these smaller energy uh, objects that are floating around the outside that are, have what you call a negative charge. This picture illustrates a little better. This is a carbon atom, and it has six electrons, two in this first little orbital area, and then four on the outside. We learn about these because it's, and look at francium. Francium has a lot of electrons. These are all electrons floating around the nucleus of it. All right. This idea in general, the, to understand electrons is, and to understand electrons and the nucleus, explains why atoms bond together. And we need to understand that atoms bond and have chemical reactions and change bonds and structures because that explains how life is helped or harmed. This right here is a simulation. The link to it is now active. I'll make sure it's active on the when it's on Google Classroom. And so is this one. The one that says balloons is the one you need to answer these questions. So you turn the simulation on, and a positive charge is directed to what charge? So you're going to take the balloon, play around, and you'll find out that the balloon, once it gets a lot of electrons on it, which is the basis of static electricity, is the flow of electrons, and the, the electrons will land here, and you have to decide what, what's going on. What does the balloon want to do once you steal electrons uh, from one of the surfaces? It says, explain your evidence of similar charges, plus or minus, repelling each other. So certain charges repel each other. Give your reasons for what you think that is. So which charges repel? And then it says, connect ideas from simulation to explain how an atom is formed from protons, electrons, and charges. So uh, atoms are formed with different charges, and atoms hold together. They keep themselves together. Why is that? Base your idea on charges. So how do you think the atom holds itself together and doesn't just fly apart into its little pieces of protons and or the nucleus and electrons? Why, why they stick together? But base that on charges. Use this simulation to help you. You can also go to this website. It's not required, but it can help you see how atoms interact. It will show you that they have an attraction to one another or they're repelled from one another. It'll show you how attracted they can be to one another based on different types of atoms or elements and it's all helpful. Here we go. This uh, part of the slide here, I'm going to, a little, a little hard to read here. I'm going to bring it down a little. There you go. Here we go. So this uh, link to here, this is likely a uh, Bill Nye video. Watch it if it's still there, if the link is active. And it gives a, little, uh, a lot of good background information on atoms. Here we go. This question's a little more playful. Uh, it says, larger organisms are made up of chemically bonded atoms than smaller individuals. It says, in your journal, explain if it's fair to pick on an individual who is made of fewer atoms than you. Do you think that's fair? All right, we're going to stop here, and I'm going to start the next clip in a minute. Good luck.